what's up guys this is Gary with fresh from the farm fungi and I'm going to be pouring about 220 plates today um, a friend of mine is uh, getting ready to do a teaching class so I just thought I'd use this opportunity to show everyone how I pour plates if you've seen my other video about the vertical laminar flow um, you'll know that I prefer this vertical hood because of uh, how many plates that I'm, I'm pouring for production. So I'm gonna show you guys um, how I stack it. And he had already prepared some auger, so I'm gonna be using um, multi-extract multi auger that he already prepared. So I'll just uh, breeze over how to make the auger um, since it was in a couple of my other videos. And this one is mainly focused on how I'm going to be pouring all of these plates in a four foot by two foot laminar hood. Um, all right, so let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be bringing four liters of water to a boil. And then I've got 276 grams already pre-weighed out um, of the malt extract yeast auger. So once this boils, then I'm going to be adding the auger and making sure it's dissolved. And then from there, I transfer the liquid dissolved auger into mason jars. And then I'm going to sterilize that for 20 minutes at 15 PSI. And then move it into the laminar hood to cool off. And then from there, I'll be pouring the plates um, so if you've seen any of my other videos I kind of go a little bit more thorough through this procedure but I'm just gonna be adding this auger um, as soon as it comes to a boil and then I'll show you how I pour the plates all right hey guys so I actually found these jars that are glass on glass which I'm gonna test out um, I really like glass on glass idea because Normally when I put it on the mason jars, I screw it tight and then a quarter turn less so that, um, that the seal doesn't create a vacuum and crack the, the glass jars. But these are pretty hefty and with that glass on glass, I know I'm not going to get any boil over or um, a seal to cause cracking. And these ones have a really nice square grip, so I feel like they're going to be easy to pour. So we'll get to test these out together. All right, All right so this auger is almost dissolved now. I'm just going to start ladling this um, into this two liter glass jar and then I'll throw it in the pressure cooker. While that auger is pressure cooking and sterilizing, I am going to prep the hood. When you're pouring plates, it is very important to um, give your hood uh, thorough bleaching and wipe it clean with alcohol. Also, even though that um, these packs are sterile, I like to spray the outside with bleach um, just to be, you know, extra safe. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and this is 15% uh, bleach, so I just spray the entire hood with that to give it a nice coating and then I'm just going to go ahead and spray all these plates. All right, so now that these plates have dried from the bleach spray, I'm just going to go ahead and um, start wiping the bleach with an alcohol wipe. So I usually just uh, grab a couple paper towels and coat them with alcohol. Um, I, I like to use um, isopropyl of about 71% or up to you know 85 even 90% isopropyl will work but um, this is mainly to get the bleach off uh, someday I hope to get a stainless steel casing um, the plastic eventually gets corroded from the bleach which it doesn't really affect anything, but it's just kind of uh, aesthetically noticeable. So I'm, whenever I'm cleaning my hood, um, I'm going from top to bottom, 
and then from back to front. So I want to wipe all the particulates and any dust that might be in there, which I clean this hood daily, so um, I know that it's going to be clean, but if you're uh, getting a new hood or you know you haven't used it in a while, you really want to do a thorough job, um, especially when you're pouring plates. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe my hood down and then once I wipe it down I usually spray it um, give it a thorough coat of alcohol and then when that evaporates um, it's ready to pour and I'm also gonna sterilize these with bleach so I'll have some sterile scissors to open up the packaging. All right, so the auger is done sterilizing, is just cooled up, and I'm gonna open up these pressure cookers and begin the pouring. So the, uh, I'm gonna focus this in over here. So essentially all these plates um, I'm going to stack them vertically and then cut off the bottom of these plates like this and pull the sleeves off by pulling up the plastic and stacking them up. Um, so I'm going to be doing that and setting them off to the side. Um, you can just watch me as I open these. So I've got that molten auger out and I threw on this extra glove just for heat protection. Um, but I'm just going to start pouring out plates and the idea for pouring stacks um, is to start from the back and then move from either left to right or right to left, whichever hand you prefer. But I'm right handed so I'm going to go from left to right and we're gonna be stacking the plates along the back and then in one solid line, pouring that line and then stacking the next row forward so you're never reaching over a sterile plate. Um, the air is flowing from the top to the bottom. So I'm just always aware of any open skin which these gloves um, help to protect the edge of the lab coat here um, 
And then while I'm pouring, I just want to make sure that I'm taking the jar and pouring it away from me. And that way I won't contaminate any of the plates. But I'm just going to go ahead and play this footage and you'll get a really good understanding of my procedure. I'll try to focus it in on the hood over there. So when I'm opening these, I'm just looking for the bottom, bottom of the plate so that when I cut this open, I will be stacking these plates. And you just kind of peel off and then I always save these sleeves just to be a little bit um, eco-friendly if you cut it right near the seam you can heat seal them and then throw them back in the box and um, they're just a good way to you know save the earth So I'll show you how I stack these up so you can see right there um, that's kind of the form that I like to stack them in and then after you fill it you can kind of push the plates close and then stack the next layer on top so it's just a nifty way that I keep them aligned so that I can do multiple layers of plates Alright, so if you can see the condensation starting to form on the plates, um, that is something that I usually try to avoid. So to help prevent condensation, you just uh, leave the lid off the plate and then wait about two or three minutes for that steam to evaporate and then um, you can go ahead and push those plates closed for the next layer. So it's been a couple minutes and now you can go ahead and push these plates closed and get ready for the next layer. So an alternative approach to uh, pouring plates spread out um, is you can stack them and pour them. So essentially you just want to start from the bottom. Pour. And then just work your way up to the top. So this is nice if you have a horizontal hood. Or a vertical hood because uh, the top plates are going to be the most sterile anyway. The only downside is you end up with a little bit more condensation. There you have it. Two different ways how to pour plates. Um, you can either spread them out and pour them and let the steam evaporate or do them in a stack, which as long as it's, uh, it's not cooling off, then it should be fine. And you can always tap the plates on their side while you're putting them in the sleeves and that will help 
mitigate condensation, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of these plates before this auger cools. Um, I hope that this video is helpful. Um, give us a like if you like the video, if, uh, subscribe if you haven't yet, and um, much love. Stay tuned for more videos like this, and comment below if um, you have any thoughts or concerns. All right, much love. Alright, so there you have it, um, 212 plates poured, there was a little bit of uh, clumping at the end of these last two jars, um, that's why it's important to move quickly while you're pouring your plates, um, normally I get those all done but I was uh, busy explaining things, um, but I'm just going to let these cool and then Usually I let my plates stand um, for about 72 hours and that way you can QC your plates if there's any growth uh, from contamination then you know that you probably have to change your filters or you have to perfect your technique. I made sure that I'm not crossing my skin over the auger and um, since they're all kind of a warm temperature you can't really see the condensation, but um, usually I will do the six millimeter and the, the smaller plates and pour them out in rows. And that way, by the time I get to the next row, all those, uh, the small plates will be cooled already so I can shut those. But I'm doing all these plates for a friend of mine. Um, shout out to Zach. So I decided to uh, do them in stacks. Either way, it works. Um, and that's how I do 200 plates. So if you like this, um, subscribe, share these videos. If you're getting any kind of value, um, like the video and much love.